Get this figure and more at the Lunar Toy Store. <coughs> hey, my name is Jobby, and yet another third party Megatron tank. Because the last time went so well. I mean, what last time? What even am I talking about? Today, we're talking about the Spark Toy Zero 2. Spartacus. And I guess it's called Spartacus because Megatron was supposed to be a gladiator back in his Cybertronian days. And Spartacus is a classic movie about that subject matter, I suppose. That movie also has an obnoxiously catchy love theme. This particular version of Megatron is based on his appearance from the Transformers War Within comic books, which surprisingly is right there on the goddamn box. These third party companies are getting really ballsy nowadays. And for those of you who don't know, third party just means it's a Transformer figure not legally sanctioned by Hasbro or Takara Tomy, but it's perfectly within the right because they don't call the figure what it is. No, I am. Now this is the second figure that Spark Toys has to offer. I reviewed the first one that they did, which I did review on this channel. Go check that video out if you'd like. And while that figure was perfectly fine and good, there's something that they did with this guy that is just that bit. Mm. Painting the sculpting on this figure is amazing. While I'm actually not too big of a fan of the overly buff aesthetic of the War Within comics, the figure version with all its precise mechanical detail is really selling me on the whole Big boy idea. <laughs> Will this be the new jobby meme that'll be dead within a few months? Subscribe to find out. <laughs> now the incredible amount of detail is one thing, but the pain of detail on this guy is super impressive. Yes, the figure does adhere to the classic monochromatic color scheme of Megatrons of yore, but check out that chest. Just those tiny bits of Bright colors add so much. Also pretty cool how his chest area vaguely resembles the belly panel of the original Megatron. There's also really subtle shading at the metallic silver parts. It's kind of hard to pick it out on camera because it looks so much like natural shading. You see how the corner of some parts are kind of dark? Yeah, that's actually painted on goddamn Da Vinci's working at Spark Toys. As beautiful as the painting and sculpting is, there is one aspect that kind of weirds me out. And of course, I'm talking about the seemingly man-made decals that are all over the figure. Or is it decals? I was never quite sure about that, but no matter all I'm saying is that why the heck would an alien robot have caution signs on his knees? But being a fan of Gundams that are deco to shit, I actually really like the look. Even though it doesn't make much logical sense. <laughs> Did you say Gundam? Review more Gundam, yeah, yeah, calm your fucking tits. And it should come as no surprise that the back of the figure is relatively plain. I can't complain too much because that just means that the kibble on the figure is well integrated. And for those of you who don't know, just look it up, please. And on the topic of well integrated kibble, this super obvious cannon can actually fold up to become a cool looking shoulder cannon. You even get something that the cannon can fire, but we'll talk about that more later because it's not accessory time yet. Other gimmicks include these side skirts. There's these little switches here that you can pull up. And now he has a pair of hip missiles. They're also on this ridiculously thin strut that allows them to pop off extremely easy. That is not a feature, that's just fucking annoying. Even more annoying is to get them back on because you gotta- fuck. There we go. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that tiny little aspect is actually pretty disappointing because the rest of the figure is so... <laughs> See? It makes the fiddliness of these side skirts stand out. And... and here we go. That... that one won't even... Oh, maybe some form of die-cast construction would help the solidity of these things because die-cast metal makes everything better, right? Well, in the case of the figure's feet, these treads, and various other parts that my cold touch technique can't quite detect, yes, die-cast metal does make things better. Gives the figure a really nice weight. And now we're gonna move on to the face because it's that part of the review, shut up. And back in his younger days, Megatron was quite the looker, wasn't he? He is kind of a pretty boy, which is a funny contrast with the big boy body, but it still works. And if you're not into the whole blue steel look, you can remove his face, that... Where did that go? You've also got to remove his eyes and put it right into this alternate face. And now he just looks mildly irritated. You also get a face that's more in line with the G1 Megatron. And honestly, this face looks out of place with his head sculpt. And you get a laughing G1 Megatron head. Pretty good. In addition to the faces, you get a few more accessories. You get a missile. And you can put it in this cannon here. Make sure that arrow's pointing forward. And you can push this red button here and... Yippee! It does shoot pretty hard and fast, so if you want to lose an eyeball... You know what to do. You also get a really cool looking sword. This thing can extend. Uh, and that tabs right into his hand. Uh, goddamn. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get.
It looks really cool. But the gladiator mode isn't complete without this obviously piece of kibble shield. It simply plugs into this hole in his arm here, and that is a great look for this design. And the detail on the shield is not too shabby. But again, obviously it's part of the alternate mode, doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, it's another great use of kibble. And you get a pea shooter, which again plugs into a hole in his arm. Looks absolutely pathetic. But to make up for Megatron's insecurities, you do get a fusion cannon. And for any Megatron fan that didn't even notice he didn't have it, yeah, me neither. And for me, that's because the fusion cannon actually looks out of place for this design. But, but G1! Eat poop and perish, we don't need this thing here. And for his final accessory, not really an accessory, more like a feature, you can pop off his chest here, out, which reveals more internal detail, and this turns out to be one of the most coolest battery covers I've ever seen. LR44 batteries not included. But why would she need battery? You ask as you tap to my tumbler. Well, there's this tiny little switch here that you can flip, and when you do, oh, it's kind of underwhelming. But what if I did this? Eh. It's awesome that Spark Toys included it at all. Now before we move on to the, I want to point out how beautiful this thing Views. All of the paint on the figure has this really nice satin finish to it, which makes the majority of the figure feel silky smooth. Of course, this is a double-edged sword because that increases the risk of paint chipping, but with how solid all the joints really are, I don't care. Ball joint at the head allows him to look up that far and look down that far. Arm can rotate a full 360. Arm can move out. Bicep swivel that the tread interrupts. Bend at the elbow. Swivel here. He's got one of those index finger three finger separations and a hinge joint at the middle of the index finger. Okay. Got a chest crunch. Swivel at the waist. Side skirts are, of course, on ball joints. Frontier moves up. That allows for a kick. Can't move back that far. Mm. Thigh swivel. Bend at the knee. The lower leg can rotate, but that's more for the transformation. Slide up and down at the ankle. Slight toe bend. And a not so slight ankle pivot. Posability on this figure is fantastic. That chest crunch adds that little bit of dynamic. Ism. And there's ratchet joints where there should be. You see, with a figure of this size and weight, ratchet joints are appropriate to keep the figure standing and stable, Kyodo. And speaking of the size, yeah, that's still a thing. Give me back my ruler, you piece of shit. Here's Figma Monica Academy, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Masterpiece Megatron, I totally didn't forget to film Prime, the Mass Toy Skiff, and the Spark Toys Alpha Pack. And seeing these figures side by side, goddamn, someone at Spark Toys liked Megatron more than Optimus Prime. What I'm saying is this figure is infinitely superior. That is, so far, does the trans- Transformation add up to the Spark Toys Alpha Pack? Who knows until we actually get into it and maybe skip it, most likely. <laughs> And here we have the tank mode. Okay. Make no mistake, all the excellent painting and sculpting carries over from the robot mode. It's just that the actual design of this vehicle mode is kind of confused. It looks more like a mining vehicle haphazardly outfitted for war, and I realize now that that's the point. Wow, I'm an idiot. You see, it's because from what I know of Megatron's backstory, he was a miner that did the gladiator stuff on the side, so it would make sense that in the middle of the Decepticon uprising, he would outfit his mining vehicle mode to be a goddamn war machine. Either that or I just completely pulled that out of my ass and I'm getting my timelines mixed up, but who gives a shit about the Transformers comic? Anyway, I still think the vehicle mode looks okay. Not terrible, but not terribly interesting. And it's flat as a... 14 year old, note to self, cut that out. The weapon storage on this mode is pretty good. I especially like that Texas tuck. I don't see a reason for the pea shooter when there's a goddamn fusion cannon right there. And you could always remove these guns for a cleaner looking vehicle mode. I think I prefer it this way actually. And even though it doesn't matter in the long run, much like our lives, I feel I should point out that the bottom of this mode is terrible. But like I said, the bottom of a vehicle mode doesn't really matter because you're not gonna display it like this. But it does come off as lazy engineering. I mean, if it really bothers you, you could just 
It's perfect now. 10 out of 10. Of course, the missile can still fire. Oh. The turret can move up and down. <laughs> the scoop things on a hinge joint. These can close. And a really neat feature. The treads are actually functional. I mean, it's pretty tight, so they won't perfectly roll on any surface. And I am ruining my setup right now. I'm going to stop. Now let's do some size comparison so I can end this video and get something to eat. God, I'm so fat. Madaga Godzilla Megatron. Mass Toy Skiff. And Alpha Pack. In terms of vehicle mode, I think Alpha Pack is better. It's just more cohesive and has no kibble at all. But if we're talking about the overall, <laughs> this figure is amazing. The amount of love and effort that Spark Toys put into this figure is obvious, and I would highly recommend it if you're a Transformers fan, War Within or not, or if you're just into big boys. That's the official death of that meme, thanks for subscribing. And if you wanted this guy for yourself, check out the description that leads you to the Lunar Toy Store. It has been a while since I had that name in my mouth, and I have to apologize for the Lunar Toy Store for the extreme delay. They actually provided me this figure like, what, five months ago? <laughs> Last year, technically. But hey, if you're watching this, and I know you are because I'll send it to you, I'm still perfectly willing to work with the Lunar Toy Store, but I do have a few conditions. Number one, don't make me pay for anything, and number two, stop shoving model kits and sexy statues down my throat. So leave a thumbs up up if you liked the video, leave a thumbs down if you didn't like the video, but feel like you should exert your control over something because you have lost control over your life, don't worry, I've been there. And leave a comment if you're not a complete child. That one's not gonna happen. <laughs>